malung el total merkita roco es decir que el malung el total mortir que el buca del no se puede ir el el tren el guita la hasta el radio asado el total más a doble un aliban a que en si dinero será obtener hospital ya oban que gran hasta a mí da pensar mi el día que en si dinero ma choice Antonio el el chocero la en si di ma doctor Patrick la CB cat team ma tutta gli era il tutta gli in bombo il mazzara a sugal in the workplace se ha vai ancora momenti a picar la mam di chi mamma smodi a ai cal il per padre la sugal a ringattare il padre ma alle il buon ambiente il suo di tel ai cal il tre il padre la sugal Nganya tiri benda yang asuh kali, nganya Taiwan diabetes. Jadi Taiwan diabetes, ah, om sendra tiri kal ada mil el, lal kalmal lapan kuya seti. So mula mugi ni lal dimerus throughout tak langgar ti. Lapan kuya. Lapan kuya se lal toba ta insulin. Why say? Why say? Menteri lagi lal ngan kal dimel. Talman na pangkuyasarti, man na mag-iiril di Marus, tiga kita na mag-adong artil mo type 1 diabetes. Type 2 diabetes, sila sukal na terakak kalo mga led, mga lifestyle na gide. Mung sa edad mo mag-clow eh, mo sukal, sa edad mag-gare, di mag-gare sukal, then yung terakak kalo mga led. And then ang ayin sila, The domodong is a gestational diabetes. Sugal ala diol. Di selva selva di la mo diol ng mo sugal. Ah ah. Yaa bol mara ng diol. Ang gokmut ng mo normal. Ang bitrya gid del redil mo diol ng mo sugal. O masin del time na kla ngar mada del time. Ang klote el diol mo type two diabetes. Kam lo ngil mo diol gid del tril ba niya na sugal o ang Kau nanti sel type 2 mah, sel type 2 mah type 3. A gestational, jaga type 3, gestational diabetes. So type 2 diabetes, sugal itu semua terakak lo mengalir, terakak lo mengalir, mah kita lifestyle lagi. Ia kerana all more segit el sugal. Nganya di mili makar, nganya di mili makar di mabrus. And then a gestational diabetes. Jadi kal, jadi lel modyol, dia akan rukun jadi lel modyol lel sugal. Dengan ini jadi kal jadi lel modyol lel mo sugal. Esel be el teruk mungil. Sehingga kita mungkin orang ini lah sen gestational diabetes. Di omsin del time jadi kal jadi lel modyol lel mo sugal esel be el teruk mungil. Angar mada del time yang lagal kerja kerap lama retir itu mo sugal. Kamu lihat? Baik. So, elang orang orang ah symptoms sara cell type two diabetes. Ah type two diabetes ah, jadi kalau musugal, terbelon mama suara dengan orang top dalam amir, especially at night. Tinggal orang teman mu ama, eh tinggal orang meja orang dia, dia nak kal double all, mabel aswar lose weight without even trying to lose weight ya, jadi somehow itu terus memang terus 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 malam malam nanti itu mau ok ngai dah, tinggal orang tersong orang ada, mau orang maknita osingir, eh mau namnes ada orang yang mau imori, kurang mat. Gua ramah dari gal imorir ma orir, dengan ada skarir, madir tapa tengir, belol ngarni ya, albor ngat teri ada tapa tengir, eng mayau dengan mama ups. E belol di maktub maktub ah maktub apa lagi ngerti? Belol di mosme ada teri temurnya apa lagi ngerti? Segi dah, segi dia simptom sura type two diabetes. Good morning, Palau. This is Lee Petrick, PAC. Um, I'm still working on my Palauan. Thank you for having me. Um, I didn't understand everything that was said, but I got the main gist of it. Um, so just, I guess, an English version would be, 
Uh, type 1 is more how I explain it is genetic. Um, you don't make insulin uh, like you should. So a lot of times you go on insulin early in life. Uh, generally you think young, healthy, or skinnier looking. Uh, type 2 uh, classically is you know, an adult, uh, a little bit heavier onset. Um, they have insulin resistance, so they gradually develop this over time. And gestational diabetes um, is associated with pregnancy. Uh, that has to do with uh, baby or fetus and placenta uh, causing a need for extra insulin, which uh, usually the mother will produce, but not always. Um, so that's why it's important to get tested um, during pregnancy. And then have you talked about symptoms? Yeah, yeah. what, yeah. what okay. conditions are uh, uh, symptoms? Yes. For diabetes. So for diabetes, you're usually looking for what we call polyuria, polyphasia, and polydipsia. So you're going to the restroom, you're urinating or voiding, um, and you're like, hey, why am I peeing so much, right? Why do I keep going to the bathroom? Or you could just be hungry all the time. So you keep eating and eating and eating, and you're never satiated or full. Um, and then polydipsia, so uh, you're always thirsty all the time. So you're drinking water, drinking water, drinking mm -hmm. water. Um, and you're like, hey, what's going on? And on top of that, you're, what it's usually also associated with is you're drinking a lot, you're eating a lot, you're urinating a lot, um, but you could also be losing weight um, mm -hmm. if it's you know, very, very poorly controlled. Um, so those are like the classic signs. Um, if you have a, you know, a young son or daughter and you find them you know, not growing well, going to the bathroom a lot, um, urinating all the time, uh, that could potentially be type one in a child and you should go see your primary care physician or pediatrician just to get them screened, um, most likely with a blood sugar check and clinic a point of care check. Can, can, can uh, diabetes uh, symptoms be something else? Yes, so that's why it's important to get screened um, you know, by a medical provider. For example, uh, let's see, poly, polyuria, so genital urinary system, mm -hmm. Um, just because you're urinating frequently uh, doesn't mean you have diabetes, right? That could be just as simple as a UTI, urinary tract infection. Um, so just because you have one symptom or even two doesn't mean you have diabetes. Um, it just means, hey, maybe you should go get checked out by your um, physician or medical provider to make sure that you don't. Yeah, because it could be something else. And then, then you kind of go down the rabbit hole because every symptom could be, you know, usually one, two, ten, maybe even a hundred plus things. What are uh, some uh, major complications of uh, diabetes? Uh, so basic complications, the thing I usually hit on is one, retinopathy, so loss of uh, vision. It starts off gradually, so you just gradually kind of get blurrier and blurrier vision. It could lead to blindness, uh, worst case scenario. Uh, so eyes, kidneys, so blood sugar affects your kidneys, uh, so I recommend uh, all diabetics get screened for kidney disease. Um, and then peripheral neuropathy, so that's just a fancy term for, hey, you know, it usually starts off as like a weird tingling, maybe turning into a painful sensation, uh, usually in glove-like or sock-like distribution. So that means uh, both sides, so both sides of your fingers, hands, toes, feet, um, and it goes from kind of that tingling to painful to eventually you lose all sensation. Um, and at that point, that's when uh, diabetic foot checks become very important because if you are, are diabetic, you have lost sensation in your feet and you're not wearing shoes or sandals and you step on say a nail or maybe a seashell uh, and you have that infection or cut on the bottom of your foot. If you don't get it checked out, it can get worse and worse and worse before you even know it's there. I think many Palawans experience those. <laughs> and uh, I was just wondering uh, uh, what uh, diseases are very common to diabetes. Uh, do you have uh, specific diseases that are common to uh, Yes, so if you're diabetic, um, the first two things that pop in mind, cholesterol and blood pressure. Um, so if you're diabetic, um, definitely cholesterol, you wanna get that checked. Um, and a lot of times diabetics are gonna also be on a statin medication uh, if their uh, elevated uh, lipids or cholesterol is pretty high. And then on that note, so you have total cholesterol, LDL and HDL. So total cholesterol is a combination of everything LDL, just as a reminder to everybody out there, is your bad cholesterol, and HDL is your good cholesterol. Mm -hmm. uh, blood pressure, 
So you want to make sure your blood pressure is controlled. So just like diabetes, blood pressure can affect the eyes, the kidneys, and just, you know, everywhere in the body. So for blood pressure, generally speaking, uh, less than 140 on your systolic or top number, less than 90 on your bottom number or diastolic um, is what we're looking for immediately. And then case by case, that can change. It can go up a little bit if you're older. It can go down a little bit if you have multiple diseases. Um, but generally, uh, you know, as, as a whole, I would just say less than 140, less than 90. Um, but to the specific patient out there, it may be a little bit different for you given your medical case. You know, doctor, uh, uh, I hear many people who are diabetes and they're taking medications and they don't really want to take medications unless they have some natural food or anything that they can take instead of uh, taking medicines. Do you have any recommendations? Uh, yes, so again, it's gonna depend if it's type one, type two, or gestational. So type one, um, if, if you've been diagnosed as a type one, unfortunately, you're most likely gonna be an insulin. There's really no way around that. Um, if you're type two, so again, classically type two is gonna be gradual onset over years and years and years. Usually you'll, you'll find yourself, you know, if you think back, you know, five, 10 years ago, you've probably been eating unhealthy. You probably haven't been exercising a lot. Um, so there are definitely things you can do to not be on medicine, but you really need early intervention with lifestyle changes. Um, so I would say the minimum is, so aerobic exercise, I always challenge my patients to, you know, at least walk um, for at least 30 minutes straight. So you can't stop, it has to be like an ongoing 30 minute walk, uh, most days of the week, which would be at least four times a week. Um, and that, that's kind of the minimum. And you know, uh, w once that's set, kind of increase that slowly. Again, you don't want to injure yourself uh, if you haven't exercised in a while, so it's a gradual uh, build up period. But aerobic exercise is one of the best things you can do to utilize the sugars in your blood uh, to make your mm -hmm. cells want that energy versus storing it. Um, let's see, so, and then diet. So a lot of people do not, um, I guess, completely understand uh, sugars. So carbohydrates, i.e. breads, cakes, starches, those all break down into your body as sugar. Um, so I have someone in my family, um, they always think of sugar as like the, the white tablespoon sugar mm -hmm. that you put in like mm -hmm. your drink. Um, but it's important to know like, hey, if you eat a sandwich, the, the bread is, is also sugar. Mm. Yeah. So whole grains are the way to go with that. Uh, you want to avoid like white breads, white sugars, white cakes, uh, white rice. So white rice is challenging because it's delicious. Um, I always try to encourage people like, hey, don't cut out white rice, just decrease it a little bit um, and or substitute maybe a little bit of brown rice. Um, but usually with the feedback I get is like, hey, brown rice doesn't taste as good. Um, so maybe just, you know, a little less white rice, a little more brown rice, and then uh, over time gradually with uh, slow aerobic activity uh, and those lifestyle changes. That's, that's gonna help at least prevent the need for medication, but um, it's not 100%, right? It just depends on your genetic status um, and how your body responds. You know, I, I've heard uh, many people are on diet mm -hmm. just to lose weight. Right. And they, uh, their last meal would be like uh, 12 o'clock or 2 p.m. in the evening, in the afternoon, and they don't eat the next day. But their sugar levels uh, drop uh, very fast, so they get kind of dizzy. W w what would uh, be the effect of that? So based on the question you asked, it sounds like potentially, potentially hypoglycemia, mm -hmm. which can be diagnosed with a point of care blood glucose. Um, and that's usually gonna be in, in your diabetics that's already diagnosed. Um, and then if it, usually about 55 is when you're gonna become symptomatic, like shaky and not feeling mm -hmm. well. Um, and if it drops lower than that, you're at risk for loss of consciousness and bad outcomes. Um, so again, that would kind of depend on like, are you young and healthy and just trying to prevent diabetes or have you already been diagnosed with diabetes and are you on insulin? So there's like two uh, answers depending on the case and then everybody in between. And then uh, going back to uh, the dieting you discussed, so it sounded like you were um, talking about uh, something that's kind of new, uh, intermittent fasting. Mm -hmm. um, so. Again, when your medical professional, provider, physician discusses diet, uh, you have to realize they're not using the word diet as you usually see on TV. Uh, so it's not like a diet. Um, it's more like just what do you eat? So lifestyle <laughs> okay. changes, right? So um, you, 
you shouldn't make any changes unless you can do them long term. That's kind of the new focus on medicine is prevention instead of like intervention. So if we can prevent diabetes from ever happening, that's going to be way better than intervening later when you already need insulin. Um, so wh whatever you choose, just choose a healthy lifestyle mm -hmm. and or diet. Again, when I say diet, it doesn't mean like a diet. It just means like what you're going to eat every day, all day for like the next 10 years. Okay, I think we need that because in Palau you eat until you know, until you don't like to eat anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I think that's in a, I think that's in a, a, a lot of places. <laughs> Moderation is the key. <laughs> Moderation is key. Yes. Okay. okay, we'll have the the nurses uh, continue, please. Go menga, the ramlo um terakran galad mo the radio kerakran um civil mutil malman. So, amal le tapirakal. Ang mga topsyo ay lang ang mga masakara at tiligay sa mga sukal ra ang silaubriyon. Diabetes in the workplace. You wanna... Oh, sure. Yeah, continue. So, diabetes in the workplace, um, one of the first things um, that I think of immediately is going back to those lifestyle changes. So, depending on whether you work in an office, kind of 9 to 5, or you have a different type of job, uh, maybe it's out on a boat, or construction work uh, during your lunch break or some part in the day you can make it a habit I've had a lot of patients like their lifestyle changes every day during lunch uh, they will do a 30 minute walk and if they do that you know at least four times a week they're hitting that minimum aerobic exercise so at least 30 minutes of aerobic exercise um, for most days a week which is at least four times a week um, and then just getting the support of your coworkers and you know supervisor or boss um, you know letting uh, your boss kind of know the situation um, and going back or kind of going into that you know you shouldn't be um, embarrassed about discussing diabetes um, so a lot of people out there are either pre-diabetic or diabetic um, if you're on lifestyle changes or just oral medication or insulin you shouldn't be embarrassed about taking your medications because you're just looking out for your own well-being um, you know get the support of your supervisors and your bosses and um, depending on where you're at, so if you are, you know, on insulin and you check your blood sugar regularly, um, you know, don't feel like you have to go hide in the bathroom to do that. That, that should be something that you can do. And if anybody uh, is, you know, curious and happens to be looking at you, you can educate them and say, hey, this is why I'm doing that, you know. Mm -hmm. um, because, again, most people are, are just lacking the education, and that's really why they're interested or curious. Um, Doctor, before you move on. Yes. Why, why do you say people get embarrassed for um, being diabetes? Why do you say that? Well, I think that would go more into if you're injecting insulin. Uh, it's not something that people tend to want to do in front of others. Um, and you know, maybe it's just shy. You know, it would depend, depend on the person. Um, it could just be shyness. It could be, you know, hey, I don't want people to know I'm diabetic. Um, would it, that, wouldn't that uh, make your body in, uh, to be to to lose your uh, body in ability to do certain things. That's yeah. why you say uh, people get embarrassed when they they are diabetes. That's, that's mostly the reason. Well, Palawans. For, what's most of the reason? That their body is uh, unable to do certain kind of things when you have diabetes. Oh, yeah. I see. It's a stigma eh? yeah. during Palau oh, being diabetes, so people are ashamed and shy mm. to just openly say, I'm diabetic. Yeah. But okay. diabetes in the workplace, if you, if, not, if you tell your manager, your coworkers that you have diabetes, be open about it, it'll be much easier. Right, and then yeah. to control you know, your diabetes, right? And I would challenge everybody out there listening. Mm -hmm. You know, if more people say yes. something, mm -hmm. uh, you'll be surprised like how frequent or how common it is. Mm -hmm. it, it's not yes. just you; like you're yeah. not alone. There's like hundreds A lot of, of thousands. Us here. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah, so. I'm seeing type two diabetes uh, in a nine-year-old uh, yes. child. So that's mm -hmm. becoming more common. Yes. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. With uh, childhood obesity yes. being more and mm -hmm. more. Um, rampant as uh, you know the decades go mm -hmm. on so that kind of goes into that lifestyle change early in life right mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. um, you know if you see any pediatrician they're usually going to recommend limited screen time mm -hmm. um, so if you just yes. think about more video games more TV mm -hmm. more computer um, you know a sedentary lifestyle uh, that's not really healthy early on in life um, especially if your child is forming 
obesity mm -hmm. or becoming obese. Um, so yes, type two is becoming yes. uh, more common in, in, in children young as children, well. Yeah. yeah. So it's important, you know. So not only to yourself, right? Those lifestyle changes. You have to make sure your children are getting a healthy lifestyle as well. And sometimes you just have to say, hey, no more cell phone for a few mm -hmm. hours. Yeah. Is that is that common here in Palau? Screen time as well. Oh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> like. Uh, Right now, yeah. uh, mothers yeah. would just give the phone to their child, play with the phone. <laughs> right. Kids these days don't go outside and play uh, anymore. Just yeah. to keep them busy. Yeah. Right. You know, yeah. Mother, you and your schedule. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you just have to be careful with that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you, you want them to learn everything, but at the same time, um, you just have to manage it um, between learning technology and also getting the appropriate amount of exercise, which I would defer, you know, go see your pediatrician. Mm. Um, if that's occurring, because that's something that should be caught earlier than later. Doctor, you mentioned about exercise in the workplace. Mm -hmm. And what kind of exercise uh, uh, do you recommend? We have uh, many people uh, are taking a walk in the morning or running, mm -hmm. but uh, we have water surrounding us. Uh, what's the difference or what is better? Oh, that's what true. kind of exercise? Uh, that you can recommend. Right, so I didn't think about that right away. I'm, I currently live in Alaska, so uh, I, I don't have the ocean around, so <laughs> I forgot the ocean's right outside. So anything aerobic, so swimming is a great exercise. Running, walking, jogging, swimming, um, an elliptical machine, cycling. Um, being in the workplace, usually one of the easiest things to do is walking because everybody has that available to them, mm -hmm. right? Um, you just go find a place to walk and don't stop for 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, again, but don't overdo it because a lot of people that get motivation, they get like super highly motivated like that first day or first week. And then sometimes I'll see them back three weeks to eight weeks later and they're like, hey, I have pain here now. And it's like, well, you, you started too fast, too strong. So uh, gradual is key. Um, but yeah, if you have the water right there, um, you can just jump in the water as long as it's safe and go for a 30 minute swim. Yeah. Uh, doctor, uh, some of our listeners want uh, the nurses to translate what you've just said. Oh, Maybe okay. they can continue to to, to okay. explain what diabetes is and what conditions uh, are related to diabetes issues. So maybe they can continue in Palawan. Sounds good. Yeah. So magdam sa para sugal na sila uriyor. Hindi ako maru, hindi ako mukara akal sakl mo aisa at aurirem mabollo tngay. And so, it will be support to the people who are working on the right side. I can't get the blood to go to the right side and exercise. I'm going to go to the right side. I'm going to go to the right side. I see. Yeah, you can tell you lunch at all one hour, eh? So we have a uh, lunch time, one hour. So then I'm more uh, 30 minutes uh, lunch time and then 30 minutes go get a, go walk. Mm. For 30 minutes. Uh, walk for 30 minutes. So I'm long one hour uh, lunch break again. That, uh, you know, you help the lower the nurse wall after eating. The last thing is that the diabetes is a program in the hospital. The treatment is a treatment. 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 In Malgaring, a NCD clinic or Kamam, Kamam Malu clinic, and more sugal, more high blood. What more other more or kicking our or song and say the material tira, dirgal, lomu, and masugale, the controller tire, all his upper tira, long rear, and my exercise. My said, you're going to go more ice, you get it, mung, rabbit the ruling of the mum, the get more the more sugal. Alas, come on, well, Ramiro Guru, 
aquí darás a mal momento. Me sé el voto sugal, a mí han dado el melel, en ser el marado parcher ni he acabado ya, en ser el marado parcher con día con día el marado parcher cau, en ser el morapete tenga hart marugui, diga o a mí no mosca en ahí, no me quiere el morado pay, chanquear, mandia que parcher cau, me quiere le ca old age, mandia que top tan es el pelo que día clangala, mañí de la drabula, me ca o a old age el sugal, molim, acal, morang Et moi, là, bah, vous aimez, le old age, elle m'en gâte à l'hôpital, là, où. Et là, moi, rien, ça tient à tout temps, et dit, moi, le sangrain, et ma, là, tout le monde, là. Moi, 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 rien, à vous aimez, moi, moi, rien, qui s'est là, bah, à l'oupa, au bac, là, 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 où. C'est là, t'es, ma, comment, et moi, hai, et bon, ma, là, là, groom, et moi, m'en gâte, là, où, et bon, moi, là, là, où, et là, où, à casa, au bac, là, 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 où. C'est là. You want to answer? Yeah, if it's okay, I'll answer in mm. English. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it sounds like the question was comparing the human body uh, to an automobile. Mm. Oh no, so the first one. Okay, so the first question: um, If you get type two diabetes, um, is it possible to become cured? Um, so I would not use the word cured. However, if it's caught early enough, um, again, so. I like to use A1C. Uh, we mm -hmm. haven't really talked about the diagnosis of diabetes yet, but um, a lot of times I'll use what's an A1C. It's a blood test, uh, and an A1C averages your blood sugar over approximately three months. Um, so it's a really good average. You don't have to worry about fasting or anything like mm -hmm. that. It's like your average um, blood sugar over three months. So the cutoff is 6.5. That's kind of the bottom line. So if you have two A1Cs, 6.5 or higher, that's the diagnosis, or one of the ways you can diagnose diabetes. Now, would I ever take that away or back? I would not, because that's telling us that you're at risk um, pretty much forever uh, for insulin resistance. Um, now, can you manage that with lifestyle intervention? The answer is yes, yes. if it's caught early mm -hmm. enough. Because once you're diabetic, the goal then becomes uh, less than seven on your A1C. So if you can be less than seven, and even better, less than 6.5, uh, by aggressive lifestyle changes, um, and I say aggressive because a lot of people, you know, do their best to make lifestyle changes, and they might do it for a month or two, even three or six months. But once you follow up at a year, two years, um, you'll see that they kind of have like slacked off a little bit. Uh, so it really is about those commitment lifestyle changes. Um, did that answer the question? Oh, pretty, pretty much. Okay. Um, now, can I address the comparison to an automobile? Oh, sure, please. Okay. So, okay. no, that works out really well. That's a good question. Yeah. Um, so, right, automobiles, they have, you know, an engine, a transmission, um, a water pump, you know, all these parts that you can just say, hey, this is broken, let's swap it out and fix it. Uh, so unfortunately with the human body, uh, we don't have the technology to uh, replace your pancreas. Mm -hmm. So once your pancreas is damaged, um, no. that, that's it. Uh, mm -hmm. So that, that's, that's a pretty straightforward uh, answer. Uh, the answer is we cannot swap out your pancreas. Um, you know, they have some uh, surgeries out there. Uh, you know, there's some heart stuff, some orthopedic like knee replacements, um, but we haven't advanced to the point of pancreas uh, artificial pancreas. Yeah, not quite yet. We have, we have a caller online, can we get one more caller? Oh, yes, please. <coughs> okay, my little to talk a little bit about it. Oh, well, I got a little bit of a sugar. I did 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 a Okay, the question is, uh, the goal is says the, the diabetes is also you inherit it. It's not only from the food uh, in your diet. Do we, do we get diabetes because we also inherit it from our parents? Right. Um, so the question is yes, no, maybe. 
So every human is different, right? Um, so again, if we go back to that type one diagnosis, that's more of a genetic component. And you, you know, mom, dad, grandpa, grandma, uh, that's gonna be a heavier genetic component. Type two may have some genetic components. However, it also has a lot of just how you live, how healthy you are. Um, so again, I feel like I just keep repeating myself, but type two, right? Um, obesity, diet, exercise, um, you know, those are just some key foundational terms um, to lead into, you know, that, that's more you affecting yourself. Uh, again, you can think of an adult, obese, um, they get lab tested, and usually you're, you, if you get screened annually, you'll usually find that you'll be pre-diabetic before you become diabetic. Um, so most people start getting all this education during pre-diabetic. Pre-diabetic is also called insulin resistant. Um, it can be uh, just a general term. I, I like the term pre-diabetic um, because it kind of lets the patient know, hey, you can expect diabetes if you don't make the changes now. Um, and then going uh, a little into gestational diabetes as well. Um, so that would be more of a genetic component, um, but again, that has to do with mom and baby, and it's a little bit more complex. Mm -hmm. um, and then whether or not uh, diabetes remains after pregnancy. So I would like to say that 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 Basically, can we talk about the risk factors? Yes. Or uh, do you want to mention about uh, some of the insulin that are common, that being used, and uh, how 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 effective are they are? Uh, yes. So the question was on the types of insulin. Yeah. Okay, um, so generally you can break those up into three categories. You have long acting, intermediate acting, and rapid insulin. Um, so uh, generally you're gonna go, um, well, let me just go back really quick and start with oral. So um, if you're pre-diabetic or you've been diagnosed with diabetes um, and it's not super aggressive or super high, you start with oral medications. Mm -hmm. Usually metformin is the go-to um, initially. And then I'll usually add on uh, citagliptin as a secondary agent. And then depending on your A1C or your blood sugar, uh, we can add in a sulfonylurea, like glipizide or glyburide. Um, and that's plus or minus. So you, you would do that before you go to insulin. But once you're at insulin, um, you have your long acting, your intermediate acting, and your rapid acting. Um, so generally you're gonna be started on long acting first. Um, I do know uh, here 70-30 uh, is more common. Mm. Um, so you'd be more on the intermediate mm -hmm. uh, slash uh, mm -hmm. rapid acting here on the island. Um, and then that uh, goes into, you know, when you check your blood sugar. And there's different ways you can manage rapid acting. Uh, it depends on the, you know, uh, the ratio and how you're gonna check your blood sugars. Uh, you know, pre-prandial, post-prandial, before meals, after meals. Um, it, it really just, because you can manage each patient um, individually, so it's really like a, a, an agreement between you and your doctor um, how you're going to start that and manage it. Um, for example, I personally prefer, if we're going to do a, a blood sugar, just a test mm. for diabetes, um, it's, it's my preference to do a fasting AM or fasting in the morning, mm -hmm. um, but you can also do randoms. Um, mm -hmm. A1Cs are great as well. And so to summarize, I guess the basic answer was there's long acting, intermediate acting, and rapid acting insulin. Yeah. Okay, can we have one caller also? Okay, Malungil Tuta Koler can write here. Oh, Malungil Tuta. Naka, Atalakal Mil Elak and the stroke. Matamakal Mil Elak and the stroke. Matalala Atalakalak and the stroke. Matalala Ramak and the stroke. 
mazamala zama kam destro mai ga faible bebenel enga ga dia a suka ranga ka kwa sol meru enga segit mak tu ais mas segit aset tiler nga nga lo sengario nga re ei sam lingo asalo ta ngalengal mangwa segit e apelur nga nga ka dak sal lo mur adal tu tau mai bilen wan rame nga klei ma lu Alright, so let's discuss some risk factors yes. for diabetes. Alright, so some just straightforward risk factors. Um, so again, pre-diabetes. This is, you know, you're seeing your physician or medical provider annually, you're getting screened, um, and you'll usually find yourself um, being screened for diabetes and finding out you're pre-diabetic before actually becoming diabetic. Um, so early intervention, again, um, the goal is if you're you know, following up routinely, annually, we can focus more on prevention than we can intervention. So if we catch it early, that's always gonna be better. Um, overweight, so overweight slash BMI, body mass index, um, pretty straightforward. Um, if you have excess weight on you, um, it's just a, a more of a strain on your body um, and it's a, a way that your body um, kind of burns out and doesn't utilize the insulin as appropriate. Um, age, so, and again, th this is focused on type 2 diabetics because that's more common than type 1. Um, type 2, so if you're 45 or older, again, that's just going to be the classic presentation because you're thinking of someone that for years and years uh, kind of led an unhealthy lifestyle. They've gained a little bit of weight. They haven't been doing a lot of aerobic activity, um, and, and it's more commonly going to be in someone a little bit older, so 45 years or older. Um, and then yeah, a parent, brother, sister, so, you know, someone in your family, uh, some kind of genetic predisposition. Again, it doesn't mean you're going to have uh, diabetes. It just means, hey, uh, there might be uh, a greater chance. Uh, so more of a reason for you to follow up annually and get screened, especially if you're, you know, moving into your 30s and 40s. Um, physically, physically inactive. So, again, um, the goal here is more days than not in a week. So there's seven days a week, uh, so more days than not would be at least four days a week. Um, and again, at least 30 minutes of consistent aerobic activity. Um, so I describe that as walking without stopping. Because a lot of people say, well, I walk to the car and then to the door and then I walk somewhere else and there's a lot of stopping in between there. You really want that nice aerobic slow activity that's continuous. Um, and if you've ever had gestational diabetes, so going back to gestational diabetes. Um, so most women, um, you know, if you are diagnosed with gest gestational diabetes by your physician, um, post-birth, you're going to find yourself going right back to normal. However, there are, are a few women that, um, you know, remain insulin resistant afterwards. And then, uh, so speaking a little bit more on the gen genetic component, so are there, there are some certain um, ethnicities or nationalities, if you will, uh, that make you just more predispositioned. Um, so a few are African American, Hispanic, Latino, American Indian, Alaska Natives, uh, Asian Americans, and one uh, that is important here, uh, Pacific Islanders. So something to be, um, you know, aware of. And then a few that you can control yourself, right? Tobacco use, unhealthy diets, exercise, um, harmful use of alcohol, so alcohol, alcohol also affects your body's ability to utilize sugars appropriately. Um, and again, that's all stuff you can do yourself. So no one can make those lifestyle changes but you. You have to be committed to yourself uh, to be healthier. Um, you know, we can encourage you and, and can encourage you as much as possible, but at the end of the day, um, the patient needs to be involved in their own health care. You know, doctor, for, uh, for the women, for uh, chest gestational uh, diabetes. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, women need sugar for their growing babies and salty food. Would they be taking those uh, on a regular basis in order for them to nurture their babies or uh, what kind of balance? So again, this would be between you and whoever's managing your care, care uh, at the OB uh, or OBGYN. Um, is that the same here, OB? Yeah. Okay. Um, so you can do lifestyle changes initially with gestational. 
Um, again, it depends on how bad your blood sugar is. Uh, if it's, you know, mildly high or, you know, yeah, mildly high, moderately high or severe or markedly high, um, it would depend on how you're going to manage the patient. Um, so some pregnant women do go on insulin. Um, and not all have to, uh, but again, that's going to be case by case depending on mm -hmm. your, your blood sugar and how, how you, your body is responding uh, to the pregnancy. Can, can we have the nurses explain uh, what you've just said? So we'll go to give explain again. <laughs> Kawa overweight, eh, over 45 years old, and kloa TLM mil musugal. They give type 2 diabetes. Malsuko mga ringa adarabli, mung oda, mung talakao, even adarabli mil mesugal. E kawa kloa TLM mil musugal. Malsuko mga direk al direk al exercise, kora di el laklo. African American, Hispanic, Latino American, American Indian, the Pacific Islander, I will see some diabetes. lifestyle เอ็นดิเซมเดอร์เซ็งเงี้ยกว่าละกันล่ะอะโรกลกันล่ะเซ็นมะงามดีกันมะงามอะไรเกเรอินมาเดเรชั่นเซ็งยี่เดียกี้
ngani ngapa si bole si pekel mosu wali en di murungil wa si ngaga mal shokal ma fuch le ng for hell the reason mo ka tokora en di indire gel morgos le ng before ya mangarawan al apol mawan al orange ranan anan time en murunga ka toktang wa si elaga quit el mai laang yang man mukla su wali mung aku kore masto masto bel manga orin sama apol aranan slaim e dia gungar elang ya ku ngam manga madal tu marwa ai ga gi dele pai napol e re elang ta me ngari si sen apai napol be la wing man marwa si aku ku logo to sai la man dire gel sebe mel mosuka la ringi le ngi ga gi dere kesengela a futsu Maka siya mong laadi gira ka mong mga daw at itim ligil amad ang mong kadukok pa'y di mga ama kami makung eh may karo ko il niyaw ngira pa tingin ka di kan tribute ng mos rati ang suka ng gida ang mos me eringi Maka siya may lang na gira ka mali mga mga uwa at kung lilo mo na E lang siya sa Ako na mo statal mga oot sa altutaw. Em na mo fila nga ko. Kasi nga ka ko nga oot siyang mamaring lang ikal joint para alt nga lel o ik. Wait siyang lalitar nga ka muri umat sa also kong makantinyul. Mga nga ko rapes tila yung siraro da ati kyal sabay din mga nga marwa oot oot mil tila wik amin de tila ati kyal sabay din mga nga. Aba brown al suga lah, wasing wungi le elanti kaya ng mawai tu suga, lemak lak mili mas plenda. Itak murang aku wasai lagi itu mal mengi. So my choice re lang ati mili mesti al straighter run, pure water from from the sky down. Saya kita lah di di penter ngi re lang rau, ayau restra itu pun mau restra kalau ngaria sweet teringi natural sweet teman diri kalau mengi. Makadim kerja tok tang wasai melal wai saya kata makarang. Kadai bakal mora what's the solution? Yang arbek lah dah sorry live little bit longer, eh have a better life. Fundi whatever you do, yang entah apa dia dah high blood malu betul suka. Ini dah mora harta apa kalau yang kup OBC wing orang. Yang kadim kerire salba itu korang rung si orang ni sulam. Sulam boleh. So we will get a question. Did you get the question? Yes. Okay. Okay, so again, it's going to be uh, case by case. Uh, so to give like specifically one person advice, I'd really need to see their medical record. Um, so this will be more of like a, a blanket answer. Um, so it's an agreement between you and the doctor that's managing your diabetes. Um, at the end of the day, you have to be honest with yourself. What changes are you willing to make? Um, so with, with that being said, uh, you know, if you're willing to eat less white rice, for example, but you're going to continue um, fruits, um, okay, at least you, you, you improved, right? You made, you made a small change. It's all about those small changes, um, not making like a drastic change, because again, the changes you make, you're, the idea is that you're going to maintain that for years and years to come. Uh, it would depend on, you know, are you only on one oral medication? Are you on three oral medications? Are you on insulin? How does the specific fruit that you like affect your postprandial or post meal blood sugar um, and we would need to see all that in your record to make like a specific recommendation um, so just just being honest uh, with your provider that's managing your diabetes um, you know and if you're like hey I'm not gonna change then you should let us know that because then we'll know how to treat you better um, but if you're you know open to, to the changes that are recommended um, then that's also going to guide our decision making. So it comes down to your specific case, how you know mild, moderate, or severe the diabetes is, what kind of treatment you're on, uh, what lifestyle changes you're willing to make. Um, and again, lifestyle changes are, are long term. So making short changes initially, um, sticking to those, then making some more sm small, short changes, sticking to those uh, until you're at a healthy BMI and a healthy lifestyle. Doctor, let me explain what uh, the willer might have okay. said. He said he's uh, in the borderline of becoming a diabetes. Right. He went to his uh, to see his doctor, mm -hmm. and he's been on uh, uh, taking uh, apple and orange. Mm -hmm. But uh, his doctor said uh, those are too sweet, and they can contribute to your diabetes. 
for you becoming diabetes. Okay. So he changed and then he started to eat banana and pineapple. And still okay. the doctor said that will cause you to become uh, diabetes. Okay. So he changed his diet to be on oatmeal. Mm -hmm. But he get uh, joint aches. So he stopped and uh, there was another kind of thing that he was taking, mm -hmm. but it also causes him to become diabetes. So he's on plain water. Oh, he used Splenda, uh, so he used Splenda, and his doctor said, "No, no, Splenda is not good." Yeah. So, so I'm I'm saying, yeah, in moderation, because the other stop are over. Are over. Fruits comes with lots of vitamins and minerals that we do not stop. Actually, we encourage more fruits. They say it with the high sugar in some fruits, you have to limit in moderation. So if a banana. Banana, one slice of banana after your meal, that's good. If it's orange, so if it's orange, maybe half of the orange with your meal, it's good. Uh, but not whole orange and a whole, a whole apple. Right, or that'll bring your sugar too high. Or yeah. 10 or 20 oranges, yeah, no, just no, to no, make no. it extreme. Right. Yeah. Yes. Uh, right. So do not stop the fruits, because we all need fruits. They're full of vitamins and minerals. They're building it all spit. In moderation. Come on, southern it to all the lambo, loving it together. Why say, in Jagat, in Jagat, say, a sugala, I mean, a rose, a more sugal, and a more babama, a stubble, and I say, rose, a rose, a rose, I think, and a sugal, and the a cunyolella, a rose, a rose, a ovengella, a yo. Mobengela a yo vitamins and minerals and yam moments of a crab and the other of a toga rat. Mandia the stova rother. A cloak to tell the nia, pomonga rother, and not a tabasul. I'll soon come in a emol orange. Empty with diesel orange, a mongara tedobel orange, a lobangel tial, blumurrao. Pecum mora giren gana rother at a lem. I'll soon come in a two. Instead of a tool of Malela, two with the ball, you more of Malela, two. Rapuspe, I sell better than a yellow bungala, I got better than a la. A rother. So do not stop a rother. Yes. A goler and gale, gal doctor, a pitrick, ganger a camp cartoon and subem and mong a messan. So I just told the goler that uh, you're stationed at uh, Camp Katu, so he can make an appointment with you so you can help uh, him with his. Uh, Diabetes. He's uh, becoming diabetes, but he's not yet there. Mm -hmm. So he may need your uh, recommendation mm -hmm. on how he can prevent himself yes, from becoming diabetes. Please come by. And maldita da, ser que amca tu aboni maldita da. You're not going to pay any money when you mm -hmm. go see Dr. Patrick at uh, at the camp katu. Nope, no charge at all. Maldita da maligo munda. Ndigal <laughs> A mal orenza programa va a tener otra cola mal interesting a programa que ha ido a guerra. A guerra va a ser el hacer bom sugal. Gracias a Nexus Step por ser un sugal el motor líquido organizado el parte de la guerra que lo va un sugal. El mol 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 sugal el mon gracias a Nexus Step para arrastrar el multi al sugal. Me sé el dos más fuerte. Kam mungkin setiap hari dia orang semua memang mendengar wasi. Selbob dah biris, engkau rasa next gizening hard engkau, anak sel mata malar tiad sistem. Sulang. Organ disease, what diabetes affects on the major organs? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So. What organs does diabetes affect? Target, yeah. Is the is the question? The yeah. So th so that kind of comes back to uh, the beginning of our hour uh, when we talked about retinopathy, neuropathy, uh, and kidney disease. Uh, so organs, right? Your, your eyes are technically, you know, a set of organs, if you will. Um, so the vessels in there 
uh, your cardiovascular system specifically um, is affected. So cardiovascular, that's um, you know heart, uh, all the vessels that go to and from your heart, uh, which affect your entire body head to toe. Um, let's see, organs, kidneys, right? So chronic kidney disease, uh, making sure that your blood pressure is well controlled. Um, the, the pancreas is an obvious one, um, because your pancreas is what uh, creates insulin uh, for your body. So whether it's type one or type two, if you're not making enough, if you're becoming resistant, um, the, the cells in your organs throughout your body, you know, for whatever reason, um, aren't accepting the insulin like they used to. And that can be, you know, head to toe. So um, what organs? You know, as a blanket statement, I would say pretty much everything in your body can be affected. Mm -hmm. However, there is a focus on eyes, kidneys, um, and your cardiovascular heart, heart and vessels. Heart and vessels, what I say? You should be able to explain it to me. Sales, <laughs> Ito malaya kita ni lao, mau ulo mong betogol ada pelar ela ngam lama ro mesilga with uncontrolled diabetes setengah abri lo mesilga. So gigi dah gigi lo la target organ damage. You know, doctor, we are in a COVID-19 pandemic, and researchers have have said that 40 percent of people who have died. On COVID-19, uh, were diabetic, type one and type two. Mm. Is that uh, true, or do you know about that? So I don't have any journal articles in front of me to confirm that specific statement. Um, but generally, the mo the more comorbidities you have, uh, comorbidities, um, the more diseases that you have going on. Mm. Um, Comorbidities. What is that? So comorbidities. Uh, that is, I have chronic disease such as diabetes, right? Okay. Um, so it's like a chronic disease or disorder, um, and it, it could be, you know, diabetes, hypertension, high cholesterol, um, you know, gout, asthma, COPD, um, pretty much any chronic disease or disorder. But as far as like commenting on that specific statement, uh, I can neither confirm nor deny that statement, right? Oh, okay. Ngari ako lahat dito sa mga ilo, mga pun mo, sumuri ang programa kita ngari ang sumet choice nila. Ano yung announcement? Mga Michael Met, may dalang kamera, ulit meron tayo. Ah, ngil tuta o ngari ang announcement tara program nga kamo announce sa loko ka mo di ka custom tiro kang yapa. Since sa kadalasan mga simre. Yeah, sabi ng kaluwan ko lero ira, bal bal choice ng simre. Tumbong. Okay, malungil to tayo ng mga raer. Oy, sa dami sa loob ng masaya, sumakdam tamal lab ng el. Hindi mula sa mga books. Hindi ka lolang ng masaya ka sugar gis. Ali? Ang sabi na nang abay malungil over hospital matatiyak na sa ng sugar lang diya. Diri rin si kolep. Lahing up, okay. Explain the same thing. The question was, if a person is injured, and then uh, and he heals very fast, would that be a sign that he's not diabetes? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. So you need to go to the hospital. <laughs> you you so, need to go see your doctor. What do you say about that? Um, so just to make sure I'm correct. If you heal quickly, yeah. you're not diabetic was the question. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, so that's not a correlation to my knowledge of whether or not you're diabetic. Um, uh, again, the only thing I can correlate is if you're a severe diabetic that has neuropathy and you can't feel your feet, if you get a cut on the bottom of your feet, um, that and then it's likely not going to heal, 
um, you know, that, that's more like severe diabetes. Um, but if you're pre-diabetic or early diabetic, um, more likely than not, you're going to be healing just as anyone else would. Diabetes <laughs>
So as I mentioned, we have a walkathon on July 28th, so you guys can join. It's for public to join. And then we have two type of walk. There's a one mile walk from track and field to PVA, and then three mile walk from track and field to National Hospital, and then return. And then after we have a raffle drawing mm -hmm. for everybody to uh, be participate. What time does it start? Uh, so the register starts at 4.30 to 5.15, and then the pro, the walk starts at 5.30. So, I was in my class, and 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 I was in my class, Human Services, Dr. Petrie, program asking you to close our program. Say what to you. Oh, thank you. Your last words, and then you close our program. Okay. I just wanted to thank everybody for listening. Uh, thank you for having me in Palau. I've been here about three weeks. Um, just to give you an idea, I know we talked about uh, dermat or not dermatology, uh, excuse me, um, diabetes today, uh, which is in the endocrine system. <clears throat> but uh, I am family medicine, so whether it be skin, uh, H E N T, head, eyes, ears, nose, and throat, uh, neurology, dermatology, uh, gastroenterology, genital urinary, uh, G Y N. Um, if you have any questions at all, please come see me on Camp Katu. Uh, I'm more than happy to help. What time uh, are you going to be there? Uh, so, as I'm only on my third week here, I'm still working out like the regular hours. Um, generally, it's going to be from 8 in the morning to 4.30 4 p.m. during the evening. Um, however, sometimes I go work in the community. So, if I'm out in the community, such as this mm -hmm. morning, the clinic is closed. Um, so, the hours do fluctuate a bit. I do my best to be there on Mondays um, all day. Uh, but again, sometimes I do get pulled away. Um, I do my best to be there all day on Friday mornings as well. Uh, and then I try to schedule anything that needs to be done in the community Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. Um, so those hours might fluctuate a little bit. But that, that's my goal starting is to um, be reliably Monday all day, Friday mornings, uh, and then the clinic will be open uh, throughout the week depending on uh, when I'm out in the community.